Hello, I'm Cass, welcome or welcome back to my channel, and I am so excited to be bringing you my 2024 TBR. I'm now saying the right year because I'm always scared in these videos that I might say the complete wrong year because I'm pretty sure that's what happened last year. Last year when I set my 2023 TBR, I did something really ambitious and that was when I put 35 books on my TBR. 35 books! And they weren't just short little cute books, they were tomes. Brandon Sanderson made up a huge chunk of that TBR, as did Christopher Panini and Samantha Shannon. Tomes, y'all. Tomes were put upon my TBR 35 of them. This year I'm doing something a little bit different called managing my expectations and learning from my mistakes. So I have 15 books on here, some of which are a little lengthy, some of which are really short, and some of which are novellas. Actually I think there's like one novella on here. But you know, tomato tomato, it is whatever. We're, we're doing 15 books, okay? And we're gonna complete this TBR. Now, we're going to be continuing with the Brandon Sanderson train that I have been riding the high on. If you don't know, I read Brandon Sanderson for the first time last year, and I have been obsessed with reading all of his works. So we're gonna start with Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson as the first book that I talk about on my TBR. This book apparently drew inspiration from Hukaru no Go, Your Name, and Final Fantasy, all in which are great inspirations and right up my alley. So I'm really curious to see how those elements are drawn into this book. We get to follow Nikaru, who is a nightmare painter in a world of darkness and technology. And then his opposing side is Yumi, who is a traveling Yoki Hijo, which is a priestess who can summon and control spirits. Sorry if I butchered any pronunciation, I do not speak Japanese. However, something happens to where Nikaru and Yumi's life intertwine to the point where Nikaru now is appearing as Yumi to people in Yumi is a spirit that only Nikaru can see. They have to work together to solve the mystery of, I guess, how that happened, fix it, and save their worlds. Who doesn't love a good world saving story? You know, I think this book will be really interesting, especially with two opposing characters working together. They seem to have very differing personalities, and I love the forced proximity nature of it as well. I don't know if there's romance. I don't think Brandon Sanderson typically tends to focus on romance. However, I just think those two characters will play off really well to create a very interesting story. And Brandon Sanderson has yet to disappoint me with his magic and writing. The second book on my 2024 TBR is This Is How You Lose The Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal El Matar. Now, this book follows two characters, Red and Blue, and they are both time-traveling spies who end up in correspondence with each other through letters. The concept alone has me so hooked. And the bonus part is that Red and Blue are both female protagonists and there's romance involved. And apparently the prose are absolutely beautiful. I'm so excited to pick this up because I don't often pick up books by multiple authors. I think that I've been so disappointed by every Cassandra Clare book written when she writes with other authors that I tend to stray away from multiple author books. However, the concept of this book just has me so enraptured that I want to pick it up so badly. The reviews on the book definitely recommend taking this at a slower pace, which I think will be really good for me because I'm not one that's super into fancy, lyrical, prosy writing. I tend to think it a bit of a slug to get through. However, this book is pretty short, and I think if I take it at a slow pace and really take it in, that I'll enjoy the story. The third book on my TBR is Founderside, which is the first book in the Founders trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett. This book apparently is comparable to Brandon Sanderson and Scott Lynch. And I have obviously read Brandon Sanderson, love Brandon Sanderson, but I've also been intrigued to read Scott Lynch's work. I just haven't. So putting those two authors together makes for something called expectations, which I'm trying to lower. However, the concept of this book sounds very interesting. We're following Sansha, who is a thief who has set out to steal an artifact with unimaginable power. She's joined with a group of allies who form an unlikely group. There's a heist and there's magic, and anytime there's a heist it makes me think of Six of Crows. So putting together Brandon Sanderson with Six of Crows heist themes I think will be really interesting. Plus the covers on these books are absolutely phenomenal. I think they're so stunning, which shouldn't be something that influences my decision of whether or not to pick these up. However, it did a little bit. The fourth book on my 2024 TBR is The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. This book takes place as a prequel to the City of Brass series, which I haven't picked up, but I do want to eventually pick up in 2024. I'm just not sure when exactly I'm going to get to it. So I'm not sure if I want to read the City of Brass trilogy first 
or read this book first. But regardless, I am so eager to pick up a pirate book. I love books set on boats, which is common knowledge because I've talked about it so much. We're gonna talk about it some more. I love books on boats, okay? It's so fun. I love getting to know a good pirate crew. And apparently we're following Amina, obviously from the title, you can tell that. And she is a pirate who was done with pirating. She hung up her hat for the last time. However, she was approached on a mission that she couldn't quite refuse because it involves helping someone that she knew and thus starts our adventure of Amina. Honestly, I have been eyeing this book for ages, literally since its release. Every time I see it in the bookstore, I pick it up. I'm like, I need to buy this book. And then I just put it back. However, next year, clearly I will be getting my hands on it because I am determined to complete my TBR. The next book is ASAP by Axie O. Oh, I love a cute little K-pop romance and this cover is literally stunning. Honestly, one of my favorite book covers to ever exist. I love the colors. I love the art style. It is simply stunning and it's really comparable to XOXO because they also adore that cover so much. We are following Sori and Nathaniel in this book, which are two characters that we got to meet in XOXO. It's a second chance romance. I love a good second chance romance and they're helping each other with scandals. Sori is a K-pop idol who has kind of reached a point where I think she doesn't want to quite be an idol and Nathaniel has already an established idol who's debuted and is pretty well known in the K-pop world. I think he's going through a bit of a scandal in this book and Sori gets to help out a little bit and I think it's just gonna be so fun and so cute. I loved Axie O's other K-pop romance book that was, as I said, XOXO. I think it'll be such a fun and cute cute read that takes place in Korea and honestly even if I wasn't interested in the book the cover alone got me. It got me so good. I need it so bad and it's releasing in February which is like the perfect little month to read it in. I'm so excited. The next book on my TBR is House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Maas. This is of course the third book in the Crescent City trilogy? Is it a trilogy? I feel like it's more but I'm not quite sure the length of Crescent City. However, I'm very excited to pick this up because the way that the second book ended is absolutely bonkers and we need resolution. But also I'm just really intrigued to see where Sarah J Maas goes with what she's doing. I am all for not spoiling things on this channel, so I'm not really going to speak about this book at all other than saying I'm very excited. I do want to read Crescent City 1 and 2. However, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time in January to pick up those books, which worries me because I need to read Crescent City 3 the second it comes out because I'll be piecing out on all social media platforms to avoid spoilers because this is a very, very anticipated read for me and knowing Sarah J Maas there's gonna be even more plot twists and I don't want to be spoiled for anything. The seventh book on my TBR is A Curious Beginning by Veronica Speedwell. No, I'm sorry. This is the first book in the Veronica Speedwell series and it's written by Deanna Rayborn. I'm so sorry to dismiss Deanna Rayborn like that. Veronica Speedwell did not write this series, she did. This series was actually recommended by quite a few people because I had read Stalking Jack the Ripper last year and really enjoyed the historical romance aspect of it. And apparently the series is comparable to that. It takes place in London back in 1887 following Veronica who ends up kind of being a free spirit until she's almost abducted by someone and then placed in the care of Stoker who I know is her little love interest and it seems very forced proximity and I really love that aspect in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series where Thomas Cresswell and Audrey Rose were kind of forced to work together. I think that's a really fun dynamic especially in a historical setting. I'm really excited to dive into an adult historical romance versus like the YA that I've read so far. I love historical romance flirting because it's like their knuckles brush and you're like Oh my gosh, their knuckles brushed. It's quite a long series. I think there's like eight or nine books already out. So it's kind of a commitment, but I think I'll low-key commit and slowly work my way through the series throughout the year. I don't know if I'm gonna binge it. Maybe I will, no promises, but I'm excited regardless. The next book is Not In Love by Allie Hazelwood. I have accepted that I am an Allie Hazelwood girly. Okay, and I have been since 2021 and we're going strong reading every new release by her because she just gets me. I love being in the head of smart, intellectual female main characters, especially in STEM fields because being a college dropout myself, I didn't get to really experience the college STEM life. 
And, I mean, I went to school for film, so it's not like I was in STEM anyways. But anyway, we're following Rue, who is a biotech engineer who's working at a startup, and she's living her best financial stable life at this little startup, which like, what is that like? What is financial stability? Never heard of her. Anyways, in comes Eli, who works at a company who's trying to do a hostile takeover over the company that Rue works for. So that's like the overshadowing thing in this relationship is that Eli and Rue are on two opposing sides of this takeover. However, they do start with a no strings attached romance, but knowing Miss Allie Hazelwood, I think strings might be attached by the end of this novel. The next book might shock you a little bit, so make sure you're sitting down for this one. I have Anne of Green Gables by Ella Montgomery on here. It's a classic, y'all. It's, I have a classic on my TBR. I don't know who I am. I don't know what has overcome me, but I felt the urge to put a classic on my TBR. I'm not one for classics. It's very rare that I can find a classic that I actually enjoy. However, Anne of Green Gables really seems like one that I might. So I wanted to give it a shot. We get to follow Anne, who's a feisty little redhead who gets adopted. However, the people that adopted her were not expecting this feisty little redhead girl. They were expecting a boy. And so it's kind of a coming of age growing up story. And I think it'll be really cute and fun. So fingers crossed that I like it because if I don't like it, I might never read another classic. <laughs> the 10th book on my TBR is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. Yes, another Brandon Sanderson book. I do want to work through his back catalog of books in the Cosmere and Elantris is one of those books. However, I read the plot summary and I was trying to like put it into my own words to summarize to you all. It literally made my head spin to try to explain it, so I'm not going to. It is Brandon Sanderson's debut, so I only have medium expectations for this one because it's not his strongest of works from what I've heard from like the reviews and such. However, regardless, I am really excited to pick it up. I really want to buy the 10th anniversary edition version, like the UK version. It's got like this orange cover. It's stunning. And I just need to fill up a Brandon Sanderson shelf, even though I already have so many books by him. It's kind of ridiculous. The next book on my 2024 TBR is Funny Story by Emily Henry. I am giving Emily Henry another shot because I loved her first three books. And while I was let down by Happy Place, I think Funny Story will be a decent Emily Henry book. I don't think she'll disappoint us two times in a row. We're following Daphne, who was in a relationship where she had a fiance. Before her fiance dumped her ass and went with his childhood best friend Petra, and I swear this is relevant because then Daphne ends up in a living situation with Miles, which is Petra's ex. So Daphne ends up in a situation where she's with her ex fiance's new fiance's ex. And I just think the concept alone sounds so ridiculous that it must be a delight. And I really hope that Emily Henry can execute it because the concept sounds so bonkers and wild and I think she can pull it off. The next book on this TBR is actually a little bit interesting. I wanted another sci-fi book to add to my TBR and I wanted an author that I've never heard of. So I went to Goodreads and I was looking at their choice awards for the sci-fi category and I was reading through all the summaries of those and this one caught my eye. It's The Jinbot of Shantaport by Sami Basu. I've never heard of the author and the concept sounded really interesting mostly because it had a talking monkey and I was like, oh, you got me there. Lena is in the city of Shantaport, which apparently is sinking or crumbling or just in shambles in general. So she's sent to retrieve this artifact of unimaginable power, like that book I was talking about earlier, but apparently it's sentient and it grants wishes and there's a talking monkey who happens to be Lena's brother. It's giving sci-fi Aladdin and I'm really intrigued by it. This doesn't have super duper high ratings or many ratings at all. However, because I don't read that much sci-fi, I feel like I might enjoy it because my expectations for sci-fi are kind of all over the place. I'm excited. You give me a monkey with attitude and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll read it. The next book on my TBR is Shadow of Hedgeman by Orson Scott Card. This is the second book in the Ender Shadow series where we get to follow Bean. Now this book actually takes place on Earth and I've heard it's really political because the battle school is now dissolved and the children that were trained in battle school are now potential weapons for all the different countries on Earth. And Bean pairs up with Peter, who's Ender's brother, and that duo has me so intrigued with how things will play out. I've heard this book isn't the strongest of the Ender Shadow series, and it really does pick up in books three and four, but I think with all the political elements and being able to have a sci-fi book on Earth is gonna be really interesting. So I am excited regardless. The next book is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I had a few books on, okay. 
I had a lot of books on my 2023 TBR that I didn't quite get to, but I didn't want to just like take all of those and put them on my 2024 TBR. But I did want to pick at least one that I would give my second chance to getting around to this year. And so I chose Priory because Dragons, Divided War, Forbidden Magic. It's a recipe for a book that I'm going to love, but for some reason I've been so intimidated by the size of it that I just haven't gotten around to it. 2024 is the year, let me tell you. And if it's not, I will just do a 24 hour readathon where I read nothing but that book in order to get it done. And the last book on my 2024 TBR, the 15th book, is actually a novella, and it's The Narrow Road Between Desires by Patrick Rothfuss. This is a novella that follows the character Bast from The Name of the Wind Chronicles. I know there's a whole situation with Patrick Rothfuss not releasing the third book and instead releasing novellas. I'm still going to pick this up because um, I'm a sucker for his writing, what can I say? I can't really talk too much about this book because it reveals things about Bass that you find out during the course of reading The Name of the Wind. I only really have medium expectations for this book because I didn't really enjoy Patrick Rothfuss's other novella, which was The Slow Regard of Silent Things, that followed Ari and it felt very boring. However, Bass is a much more interesting character, in my opinion, than Ari and had a lot more potential to explore things that we haven't yet. I know this is just a rewrite of The Lightning Tree and kind of a cop-out for a new release by Rothfuss. However, you can't stop my excitement, so it's on my list. I spent a ridiculously long time crafting my TBR for this year. I spent so many hours scrolling through Goodreads and narrowing down my choices. So I really hope that some of these are intriguing enough for you all to pick up as well. Hopefully you got some good book recs out of this. And thank you all so much for watching and I do hope to see you in the next one. Toodles!